So here it is. This is the Apple Watch 6. This is the titanium edition, and I just opened this up, 44 mil millimeter wide um, face here, um, and just received this straight from Apple, uh, where I ordered this from. Note that the base watch, I forgot, does come with the standard sports band here in a titanium gray, and this does include both the small strap and the larger strap. So I actually prefer the clasp uh, with that little adjustable knob, uh, just in case in the future I hand this down to somebody else, it's not sized to fit on the wrist. And actually at nighttime, I like putting it uh, on its side on the stand, as well as flat sometimes. So I like the versatility of that. Um, when I match this up, I actually got the black sports band, which I like, um, based off of my prior stainless steel finish. So. You know, I don't know if I actually needed to buy uh, this other than for the color difference here. In retrospect, maybe I would have gotten the single new uh, uh, elastic loop. I can't remember what they call it, but uh, that I sized out on my hand, and I am usually between a three and a four, depending on how snug I want it. And I wanted that flexibility, so I went with the standard uh, sports band with the clasp. The single new band, you'll have to size that to fit. Well, this is what's inside the Apple Watch 6. This did come with a small USB charger. So, you know, there was that whole discussion about not using chargers, right? I don't know about what that was about. Yeah, I'm just confirming this is the Apple Watch 6. Wanted to make sure. I was like, wait a second. I thought they weren't bundling chargers. Um, but yeah, this does have a USB charger. Maybe that is just on the Apple Watch 6 non-edition phones or uh, watches. I, I don't know. This titanium one might still have more accessories. It does come with your USB uh, puck here. Uh, same charger as before. But I could have sworn in the press conference that it wasn't coming with a USB charger. Well, for what it's worth, at least the edition does still have the standard stuff. Again, uh, a titanium gray band that sits over here. And then the actual, this is the watch edition, the actual titanium watch itself is sitting right here and ready to pair. Now, I am upgrading from an Apple Watch 5, which I'm gonna bring out, put it right next to it here. And this was the stainless steel black. And you can see that polished black uh, is about a year old. There are some tiny scratches, tiny ones, that you might be able to appreciate on the surface. Very hard, it's a little dusty, it's got my fingerprint on it too. Uh, but the sapphire crystal is why I did get the stainless steel edition. I always liked titanium just because titanium was a little lighter. The weight difference between these two watches, though, is negligible. So mainly it's the finish. I didn't like how they took away the gloss black this year on the stainless steel 5. Uh, I'm sorry, the stainless steel 6, which they had in the 5. I actually like that stainless steel black look. But one of the complaints was that some of the finish actually would get scuffed and start coming off. Fortunately, after a year, I really didn't have too much of that. That's just a little dirty over here. But otherwise, that stainless steel uh, black has, you know, withstood the uh, last year pretty well. Taking a look at the titanium face here, we'll actually take a look at this. And notice that the sides are more brushed matte. So this is the black titanium, which is darker than the standard titanium, but it does have more of a kind of gray look. And I guess that's why they pair that with perhaps the gray band. But again, I like the black contrast. So we'll get this all set up and see how this looks compared side by side uh, with the new titanium watch uh, six and the old stainless steel black both in 44 mil millimeters okay we got the new apple watch pairing with the phone right now so this, this is getting mirrored onto that but you can see them side by side on the right is the apple watch 5 on the left is the new apple watch 6 
they're virtually identical. These are the same bands. This one's a little weather-worn, uh, but they're the black sports band, same size. This is, you can see the titanium finish has a brushed, almost, uh, it's matte finish versus the black steel polished uh, look on the stainless steel black um, that's no longer available. Uh, this is the black titanium look, and it's a little darker. The brushed look to that has uh, less of a shine, less reflection, compared to the stainless steel in the black. But you can see kind of both of these are about the same. This is the test of how light titanium is going to be versus the stainless steel as I busted out the kitchen scale. <laughs> Got the kitchen scale out, so this is teared at zero. Well, it used to be teared at zero. There we go. And we're going to put the stainless steel on there. You know what? Let's, uh... Let's actually put it on its side and clasp the clasp. So what we're gonna do is just make sure that the whole side is sitting on the scale. Highly scientific, right? Good enough. Okay, that's zeroed. We'll put that on there. And this is the stainless steel Apple Watch 5. So the 2.74 ounces, 2.74 ounces, okay. Same size as the larger one. Same wrist strap. I'm going to put it on its side. Let me just clasp this back to zero. 2.75. This one is 2.53. Okay, so about a quarter ounce difference. Is that going to make a big difference? Probably not. So ultimately, this is going to be about finish. If you like that matte finish in the black color, uh, this is the addition to get. Stainless steel in the five. Still available in the five, a uh, little bit heavier, quarter ounce heavier um, than the titanium. Let's finish setting this up and see some of the features of the Apple Watch 6. All right, this is nerdy of me, but I have both of my watches on here. This is the Apple Watch 6 on the left and also the Apple Watch 5 on the right. There's the finish on the hand itself. Um, I do have this configured to raise to display rather than always on uh, just to save some battery as these are OLED screens and these OLEDs do have burn-in issues over time. So trying to save the screen, I don't mind it kind of waking up a little bit. Um, you'll notice the screen color uniformity is about the same. Um, the size of this, uh, I have a medium-sized wrist. I wear a three on the medium to large band. Virtually these are identical, so it's really underneath the covers that you're going to be able to see some of the new iOS watch, so watch iOS 7, watch 7. Anyways, seven uh, features such as hand washing, and I'm eager to test out that new pulse aux uh, setting, so let's go ahead and give that a try. So one of our favorite features of the Apple Watch 4, 5, and 6 is the ECG function. So this has been in three generations now, and the cool thing about the Apple Watch is it has a built-in ECG that allows you to take a one-lead ECG going from your finger to your heart and back to the Apple Watch. And there you have it, uh, 30 second ECG. Just gotta be kind of still for that, just cause you can kind of change the rhythm and the heart rate. Uh, you'll see that this captures this. And the cool thing is this actually stores in your Apple uh, iPhone, all the larger versions of these rhythm strips in the uh, health app. So that's a cool thing to have. We've already paired this to our data and 
let's check out that new pulse ox feature because I haven't seen this one yet. Let's see if we can find it in here. It's going to be one of the new apps, I presume. Let's see if we can figure it out. Looks like I'm still installing some of the old stuff. All right, which one? Oh, that's my heart rate, exercise, camera. Is that it? I'm guessing that is. There it is, the blood O2 sensor. Here are some tips that can help you take a good measurement. Make sure the watch is not too low on the wrist. Your watch band should be snug but comfortable. Keep the watch facing up and try not to move. Resting your wrist on a table can help. We're already doing that. Let's go ahead and start. So it's taking a O2 sat with some cool visualizations. And there we go, 96%. Pretty cool, huh? So you can also see your measurements on the health app on your iPhone one minute ago, so you can keep track of that. Do it again, just for good measure. Now, this technology really isn't that advanced. It's pretty cool that they're doing this on the wrist, but the pulse oximeter's been around for a long time. And the cool potential of this is a lot of stuff. You can actually see uh, how well you are exercising uh, by monitoring your oxygen levels throughout your exercise and your peak performance, cal uh, calculating your VO2 max, uh, but also at nighttime for monitoring for sleep apnea uh, seeing if you have nocturnal desaturations, that actually put, could potentially be a, a, a diagnostic tool in the future for physicians. Uh, as right now, we do use overnight pulse oximetry as our initial screening test for obstructive sleep apnea. Another good uh, application that's very practical right now is COVID-19, obviously. COVID, one of the early warning signs that you're getting in trouble and need to go to the hospital, is desaturation, right? So hypoxia, or basically a resting uh, O2 sat of less than 94% can demonstrate hypoxia, and that should uh, bring you or warn you to go to the emergency room. Okay, well, I'm not hypoxic, so that goes to show that we're doing pretty good here. And uh, the sensors on the back, which I doubt we'll be able to see, um, but we'll use red light uh, when we are taking these measurements. So let's do a, a, a faultier measurement here. We're going to start on the wrist and just peek in there. There you go. Oh, unsuccessful measurement. Apple's too smart. So what we're trying to do is just peek in there as we get that measurement to take a look at those red lights that are glowing. And those are the new sensors for the pulse ox. Let's see if I can uh, dupe this to give us a little bit of a peek in there. peek in there. There you go. You see that glow? Yeah, I did it too much. So it is using a red light, uh, which is new for the watch. Um, the other cool thing um, that this has now built in that I actually enabled is hand washing. So again, with the COVID-19 um, pandemic right now, hand washing for 20 seconds is uh, a pretty cool thing uh, to track. We've been singing happy birthday, or, you know, ABCDs, uh, but the kids oftentimes don't do it. I don't do it long enough. So one of the cool things about hand washing is that it will actually pick up your hand washing motion. So let's see if we can actually dupe it into thinking that I'm washing my hands. Not really. You know why? Because other than washing your hands with the movement, it's also listening to the sound of running water. So with that algorithm, it has been very successful to know when I start washing my hands, and it will have a countdown timer knowing when I'm finished and giving me a bubbly thumbs up. So let's see if we can actually demonstrate that. Uh, that is a feature built in the new Watch OS 7, uh, which is backward compatible with your Apple Watches. So this is not exclusive to the Apple Watch 6, uh, but certainly something that's also pretty cool uh, to have for your uh, watch of any edition uh, to help you wash your hands better. So let's see if we can check that out. 
Okay, so we're gonna demonstrate the hand washing detection of the Apple Watch. So basically it's looking for hand motion like this. And when that hand motion is detected, along with the sound of water, which we're gonna turn on in a second, I'll give you a, a, a demonstration of the indicator that goes on. Notice the countdown timer is starting. As we wash our hands more, that's counting down and it stops or pauses if we pause, okay? So we're pretending to wash our hands here. And as we get to 20 seconds, which is a long time, there you have it. Gives us a thumbs up. So 20 seconds is complete. So that was all done kind of with that algorithm to listen for water and detect that hand rubbing motion. Let's see if we can actually dupe it without the water on. So it's pretty impressive that if it's detecting this motion, it doesn't kick in until it listens to that kind of drone of water that come, comes gushing out. So another new feature of the Apple Watch 6 are new faces in the gallery. And we have a bunch of them that are new to Watch OS. And you can see uh, some of the ones here. They're highly configurable. A lot of them have different colors that you can uh, set and you can add them simply tapping on them and they will sync, wow, right to your Apple Watch. You can use a Memoji if you want. I really don't love the Memojis, but you know what? Is there a poop? There has to be a poop. No poop. There it is, the poop emoji. So we can get a nice, how about a brown? Yes, there is a brown. A nice brown Memoji background. How about that? Yeah? Um, so nice poop brown Memoji. There you go. It's flying around. Okay. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Uh, it has different uh, time zones on it that you can configure for people that travel around the world. Uh, co the chronograph. I think this is the, the new chronograph pro, pro. Yep. So as a tachymeter that can measure time and a lot of dial options that you can actually change the look. So, you know, you can add that and see that instantly on the watch there. Um, stripes, this is the one that they said, hey, you can match the colors of the rainbow, your favorite teams. You're right, you can have lots of stripes, holy smokes, ton of stripes and ton of different stripes and positions going across like a candy cane, circular even, circular stripes number of stripes. So you can go two stripes, dual tone, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, up to nine stripes. You, who would have known that stripes are, you know, so popular and a hot commodity, but you know what? That Memoji, still my favorite poop emoji, and uh, a nice brown. Where's a nice brown? Oh, there's a lot of browns. Uh, that works. That works even better. So we can add that as our poop emoji background. So those are some of the new watch faces as well as all your old faces in the uh, app that you can sync directly to your phone and try out all your styles to highly customize this. Oh, here's the uh, infograph uh, that seems to have more variance and more customization. Although these are in the previous generation here too. So it looks like they have given more style options on some of the old faces as well. And I like that Meridian uh, with the different colors, like that one. That one's pretty cool. So this is the review and demonstration of the new features of the Apple Watch 6. This is the titanium 44 millimeter Apple edition and this is available right now, shipping directly from Apple to you. Um, I don't think these are sold third party. Hope you, hopefully you enjoyed our demonstration and review. Please leave your comments, subscribe to our videos, and we will see you next time on the Chan Clans Tech Talk.